So the legend that is John P. Key joins us. Uh, years of music under his belt. Generations have come through his school and he's still going strong. Uh, John P. Key, thank you so much for joining us. We are speaking about uh, an incredible project that you have in honor of uh, uh, a friend of yours. Uh, now, let me uh, start by asking you, uh, as a contemporary of uh, Rance Allen, who who is the subject of your project, what was your first impression of him and how did he influence your music and ministry? Now, I, I talk in pictures. When, when we speak, I, I see pictures a lot. So I wonder, when you think about the first impressions of uh, Rance Allen on your music and ministry, what pictures come to mind? What videos do you play back in your mind? And what, what things, what stories come out of that? I was a kid, I was about seven. Um, and my father introduced me to this man who had incredible range. And um, uh, my, my dad was a big man. He was a 450 pound guy, uh, six two, six three, And he sounded like him. He had an amazing vocal and uh to 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 hear this man and grow up and and the first thing that captivated me as a child was his falsetta if you listen to john p key on i do worship and the high notes and the things we sing in that particular song all of that came from ranch allen fast forward i'm 23 24 bailey cathedral detroit michigan and I go upstairs and this man is sitting in the dressing room and it's Rance Allen. I get to meet him, I'm all, oh, I'm starstruck. And he immediately took me under his wing and gave me great knowledge. So he wasn't just another artist or singer to me. I lost my father in 1981. This happened in about 82 or three. And he became my father immediately. So he was a dad to me. Now, uh, of course, those who know music, not just gospel music, uh, know the journey of Rance Allen and, and the impact on, on culture, uh, which some of this generation may not know. Uh, but Rance Allen is known for blending traditional gospel, contemporary R&B sounds, uh, which some may think it's a new thing now. Uh, how do you think he was able to bridge that gap between the two genres and what impact uh has he had on the gospel music industry you've described the impact he had on your own sound and you are a huge part of uh, the business of music in america and worldwide but how would you describe his his blending of r b and the gospel sounds uh, and how he was successful at that and the impact of that on the business of gospel music in your country and beyond? Well, everybody gives Kurt Franklin uh, credit for being the first gospel artist to really cross over, and that's not true. Ranch crossed over, and he didn't just cross over. Ranch crossed over with the message of Jesus Christ. Music very contemporary, um, um, the flow of the 70s, the flow of the 80s, he was right there with your Curtis Mayfields and your Isaac Hayes. Um, he did it. And, and, and the joy of me producing this record is as you listen to this record, I, I'm loving it because those that really enjoy music will be able to listen to my version and go back and listen to his version. I didn't leave his style. I kind of reigned in there. And uh, many nights I would be doing the background vocals and I promise you this sounds real corny and I never thought I'd say it publicly, but it was almost like he was in there singing with me. It's just an amazing record and uh, I'm not tooting my horn, I'm tooting his because he impacted me and the industry so much that music lovers, not just gospel music lovers, but music lovers will embrace this project, this opus, and they're going to really enjoy it. So you capture some of his song, but you give it the the, the John P. Key uh, treatment, which you've already said he influenced a great deal of that. So we'll hear a great deal of Rance Allen. But 
as we listen to this project, which is a is an ode to a great man and his brothers, uh, and and you 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 help to register in our minds again how great this man is. What are some of the things that you hear now uh, from? younger artists younger people or even some older people that you that they say about gospel like you said you know uh we typically will, will characterize kirk as the first person to cross over uh what are other things that you hear about gospel music oh this person was the first or this was the first time to happen that you sit down with your wealth of knowledge and think no not quite i mean Rance did that and you know others like Rance before me did that what are some of those things I think um from a business standpoint um and I know this because I got into the business of Rance after uh he passed uh Rance was negotiating contracts uh Rance was uh doing movies Rance was doing soundtracks and people didn't know this stuff and um um a, a, a true story Rance and I have a song called It Is My Pleasure. Nobody's heard it. It's on lock. I'm going to probably save it for my next worship piece. I was going to put it on this record. And um, um, we have to understand, he was so big in the genre that I still think they couldn't label him. And when we see your, uh, your Kirks, when you see uh, all of my godsons, Ty Tribute, just going out on stage and and captivating the audience. Um, I bring up Rance, I bring up the late Reverend James Cleveland. That's something I got from them, you know? You get on that stage, you keep those people in the palm of your hand and you give that prophetic message through song. And uh, I see him doing it in such a huge way that, that I'm just excited. I think it's gonna be a rebirth, if you would, of this great music. But more than that, I think people will be able to capture the essence, I like that word, of who he was and who he will be or who he is today. Now, one of the one of the things that um, that's significant for musicologists about uh, Rance Allen is the the Watts Stacks uh, chapter, where in, in, in I think 1972, he was on stage with many of the other great names, Isaac Hayes and, and the others. Uh, do you remember that chapter? Uh, and what did that mean uh, for R&B music? And how did church people react to Rance Allen, uh, a, a gospel artist, being on that stage? Oh, they hated it. They absolutely hated it. And they let it be known, um, even within the Church of God in Christ, which he was birthed. Um, uh, many of the bishops uh, 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 denounced him and that whole scene, but Rance now, didn't change. So, sorry, John, John, John Piki. Can you, from your vista as a as a young man in church then, uh, describe what, what Stacks was for those who don't know about it. What was it? How, what would be the equivalent of it in this day and age? What sex was the 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 Jay Z and the Beyonce of that time? That was the secular music. That was the secular. That was what Christians didn't listen to. That's what what sex was. And for Rance to go out on that stage, I was a kid. I I had to be about eleven or twelve, I think, when I first saw it. But we loved it, man, to see the audience dancing and grooving with Rance, of course. In the back of our minds, everybody on there was going to hell because that's what we were taught, you know. But <laughs> it was great. And it's so funny because now I'm 60 years old. And I remember maybe about two years ago, re-looking at going back and revisiting that whole uh, uh, video. And, and, and just as much as it was a quote-unquote turn on back as a kid, I absolutely loved it. But the church did not embrace it back then. Now, I think they give it room, and I, I, I've heard a lot of great comments about how his music was still clean and, and his vocals were impeccable, you know, but back in the day, let it be known, and John P. Key is going to always tell you the truth, the church did not embrace it at all. 
So, so of course, John P. Key, like we said, we're we're talking about this incredible uh, project where you've uh, you've taken time to capture something of the spirit of the work of Rance Allen, who you re you regard as a as a, a father in in the faith and also in the music, uh, and you capture the songs. and And I want to uh, ask you a bit more about the songs. But whilst we're on this subject of of uh, culture and gospel music. Uh, you talk about how years ago, this is in the 70s now, Rance Allen being on that great stage with all these secular artists and the church uh, uh, having allergic reactions and skip forward to this moment we're in where there are discussions and arguments about uh, whether uh, a gospel artist should have been on the stage at the Grammys with other artists. And so it seems like there's this, it's not a new discussion. It's nothing new on the sun. When all that was going on with Maverick City and, and other artists, uh, many who who consider you a, a mentor and, and a father and come to you privately, when all that discussion is going on on social media, what's going on in your heart as an artist who knows the history and also as a pastor? What do you yeah. what what do you wish you could say to all the people in the argument, both sides. I, I've never been the orthodox, if you would, uh, pastor. Those that know me know um, I pastor where I poisoned. I sold drugs in my neighborhood for four and a half years. And God saved me on the street and I never left the neighborhood. So to date, I own almost 50 acres in the heart of the city of Charlotte, North Carolina. And I say that to say this. Um, I never played by the rules. If you if you have been a John P. Key fan for years, you know I, I was the radical one. We were we had the drum machines. I was, you know, co colorblind project was the sin of. I was singing with Take Six. I did Stevie Wonder song. I did a song with. So I've always been out of the box. So when I heard the arguments and why were you on stage with somebody dressed like a demon, here's my thoughts. Why not be on the stage and represent, you know? So, so, and people don't bother me. I could have gone on that same stage with the, at the Grammys and nobody would have said a word to me, not a word to me. And I, I don't know if it's respect or the longevity or they don't want my clap back. I don't know what it is, but at the end of the day, um, I, I've been the one that will, you know, I, I, I take guns off the street. I still minister in the hood where, the shootouts are in uh, 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 Lakewood Manor, where I used to live. There was a shootout three or four days ago. And I noticed somebody there that I knew. So I, I, I've, I've never been pushed in that box. And what I say to Maverick City, to Kirk, to Chandler, who I raised literally in my church, his father and I are good friends. Um, it's important to understand who you are and what the call is. And I believe rants showed that years ago when he was still able to go into the churches and preach and raise the pastor's money to save their churches. But he was still Rance Allen. He could go out and do the, we do, I belong to you. Me and my son, Zacardi Cortez, we do that great hit from, from the 80s. And it's just amazing. I've only played this record in front of a few people. And just now, when I started this interview, I'm getting ready to post a song called Good Enough with uh, me and Kalante. Um, and, and, and to hear this music coming again, man, it's gonna be great. I, I just, I'm excited because for all the drama, for all of the, the, the chill of the church, for whatever took place uh, in his career or on his path or on his journey, we get to revisit it again with Uncle John. Now, my, my time with you is almost done because I know you have a lot to do. Um, and this question may feel like me asking you who's your favorite child. But when you look at your journey on making this project, uh, all the different songs, which one for you is the, the, the first one that you keep going back to uh, when, when you think about this uh, great, body of work in in memory and and in 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 celebration of the great Rance Allen. 
Uh, that's 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 a deep question. You got 28 tracks, so they all mean something. Um, I think um, Miracle Worker. Miracle Worker is done by Fred Hammond on the project. And I'm excited about Miracle Worker. I get to home a little bit with him on it. But Miracle Worker, something about Miracle Worker just kind of makes me, it's like him. You know, you can't listen to that song and not see Ranch shaking his behind, you know what I mean? Singing, throwing his hands up, squalling with that incredible voice. Um, and then um, I did not, and this is great, you get this first, nobody else has gotten this info. I did not want to do um, 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 his hit, I would say, with, with, with Kirk, uh, because Kirk had remixed it so, much I think he did two times. I'm singing on one of the remixes. On um, 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 and I, I, I did it. And after I did the song, um, I was blown away because, you know, I bring these new artists: Melvin Crisfell, a young man named um, Louis Sky, and Zacardi Cortez, and we do something about the name Jesus. And it, 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 it's, it's, it's reborn. It, it comes alive again. Uh, we're working on a video. That's what I actually worked on last night, all night. We're working on the video now. And uh, so it's, it's almost like, and when you listen to it, you're going to hear rants. I grabbed some samples of his original vocal and I'll put them in there. Um, so when I think of the project, man, I have a smorgasbord of music I can visit and get happy. Uh, I, I'm just super, super excited about it. And I can't wait until you get the whole project so we can interview again so you can tell me what you think about we would, this. would absolutely love that because the bits I've heard already made my hair grow, which was a blessing considering yeah. it's been years since I had hair. But, you know, so, so very quickly, who are some of the names? You've mentioned a couple of names. Who are some of the names involved in the project with you that we can look forward to, to enjoying? A lot of them. Gene Moore is on the project. Uh, of course, Fred Hammond, uh, Jason Nelson, uh, B. Slade, a kid out in LA. Um, uh, 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 some of the musicians that play, Tony Russell uh, is on the project. Um, uh, just, wow. just so. You'll have to tell us more once we get to speak, but one, one final question for you. Uh, uh, John P. Key, um, here in the UK, we have a we have a thesis. Uh, we looked at the, the we looked at culture and realized culture is driven by pop culture. Pop culture is lit, driven by pop music. At the heart of pop music is black music, and at the heart of black music is gospel music. So there's this through line of gospel music and its impact on culture. When you hear that. Is that something you recognize in your decades of journey uh, doing gospel music? And, and for you, what are some of the biggest impacts that uh, in your journey that you've seen gospel music have on culture? Um, well, when, you, when you speak of John P. Key in the 90s, you realize, and it, I get tickled when I hear Bobby Brown, when I hear um some of the secular artists um uh john p key made an impact on so many artists that i think i impacted the culture in a way that hasn't been told yet um before whitney houston, before whitney died, houston. They listened to um fred and she wasn't she was listening to john p key we we're working on a project called 10 women 10 victories with whitney aretha and I didn't throw those projects away. I'm gonna finish those projects because they speak to my assignment in the earth. I like what I just said, I'm gonna remember that. If they speak to my assignment in the earth to touch a tank, tank is a secular artist, but anytime he interviews, he'll tell you, it was John P. Key that picked me up in DC and took me to play basketball. And I, I followed him to the concert. And so, so many artists, uh, 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 Q Parker, who's on the ranch at the project uh, with 112, he'll tell you. So I look at it like this, you're gonna love this. Ranch impacted me in such a way, 
I had to go and impact some others. So I feel like we we made a major statement and we're still making a major statement uh, on the culture. John Piki, you know, if you would be so kind, it would be it would be such an honor to book some more time with you in the future to talk about from your perspective. Tell us that story of your impact on on culture uh, and on music that hasn't been told. Um, and, and I know it may be an uncomfortable thing because you don't want to toot your own horn, but you know, it's it's such a wonderful thing to be able to capture the story because many don't know the story and every everyone thinks some things that just happened now only just started when you have, you've done them and others yeah. of your brothers and, and compatriots have done them. So it would be great to get some time with you to capture those stories from your from your mouth. So if if you say yes, I'll re I'll record it and say John Biki said. So we have to do the interview. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'll be honest. Thank you. So I'll be honest. Thank you so much.